fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! Tom Danby and Hank Warren owned adjoining ranches in the lush grazing region of the far west, but they were anything but neighborly. Their mutual hatred, which had started with a dispute over a line fence, had developed into a feud, and hardly a week passed that there wasn't trouble about one thing or another. Tom Danby, a widower, lived alone with his young son, Billy. Hank Warren, a bachelor, had the company of his little orphaned nephew, Jerry. Billy and Jerry were both about ten years old and had become close friends unknown to their elders, and the boys met secretly to play together whenever possible. One morning, a cowpoke reined up hurriedly before the Warren ranch house. Oh, boy, who, who that? <coughs> well, what's eating you, Jim? Say, boss, I thought you ought to know. That rail fence we put up across the east corner of the range is down again. What? That's right. It just come from there. That blast that ornery Tom. He must have had his ranch hands pull it down late yesterday so he to drive cattle through again. That settles it. I'm going to town and order some of that newfangled barbed wire fencing to put up. Barbed wire fencing? But boss, if you put that up, we'll have a range war on our hands. That's mean kind of stuff. I can put up what I please on my own property. And if it breaks me... I'm going to get plenty of that barbed wire and have the boys put it up. I'll see to it, Tom Danby. Don't get away with any more funny business with my fences from now on. What's the matter, Uncle Hank? Uh, nothing that concerns you, Jerry. This is grown-ups business. The boss, that... About that barbed wire, it's dangerous stuff. Is but... that the new kind of wire you looked at in town once, Uncle Hank? The kind that has stickers on yes, it? Yes, that... yes, Jerry. Now run along. Like I said, Jim, I'm getting plenty of that wire and we're putting it up. That'll take care of Tom Danby. Will it make Mr. Danby mad, Uncle Hank? Of course it'll make him mad. That's why I... Now, listen here, Jerry. I told you to run along and be quiet. Yes, sir. <laughs> ah, it'll be worth all I have to pay for that barbed wire fencing to hear what Tom Danby has to say about it. There's liable to be a shooting over it, boss. Good. Won't be the first time we've traded lead with that Danby crowd. But that fence will go up and stay up. And that's that. That 
That same day, Tom Danby and his young son, Billy, were eating supper when the foreman of the ranch entered. Well, come in, Jax. Come in. What's on your mind? Good evening, Mr. Danby. <laughs> Hi, Billy. Hello. Hey, just come from town, boss. Well? Got a bit of news while I was there. It might interest you considerably. Well, let's have it, then. Hank Warren got a whole load of barbed wire. What? Rolls and rolls of it. You mean that dirty low-down coyote's fixing to use that murderous wire to fence us out? That's right. He's fixing to do just that. So I heard tell in town. Now I won't let him get away with using it. Why is Mr. Warren going to use that kind of wire, Dad? To keep us from getting our cattle across a bit of his land, that's why. It means driving them ten miles around if we don't go across that way. Why does he care? Because he hates me, that's why. Now, Billy, you just... But why does he hate you, Dad? Do you hate him, too? Do I hate Hank Warren? Of course I do. Why shouldn't I? I don't know why. For lots of reasons, that's why. I could tell you from now till the... Well, you eat your supper, Billy. Stop pestering me with silly questions. Yes, Dad. Tex, you tell the rest of the boys. We'll keep our eyes open. As soon as Hank Warren and his bunch start putting up that wire fence, we'll face them for a showdown once and for all. Hmm? That's the way you want it, Mr. Danby, but maybe if we could find a way to get Warren to change his mind, it might save a heap of trouble. What, get Hank Warren to change his mind? Are you loco, Tex? You expect me to ride up and ask Hank Warren to please change his mind and not put up that wire fence, do you? No, 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 I don't. But, uh, well, it Stop is... hemming and hawing, then. Let Warren buy that wire. All he wants of it. But when he comes to putting it up, that'll be a different story. You can just bet on that. It was dusk when Tonto, Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, reined up at the temporary camp they shared in the nearby hills. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. <coughs> Supper's waiting, Toto. Oh, you came, Sobby. Hey. Me stay a little longer. Get news. What news? Me here talk. It's about range war. A range war? That's right. Just what did you hear about it, Toto? Well, me here men say, fellow named Hank Warren, by plenty wire with points. He make fence on range, make others plenty angry. I know where Warren's ranch is. I understand he's been having a feud with Tom Danby, who owns the adjoining spread. That's right. Warren, he make fence with pointed wire. He's going to use barbed wire, you say? Ah, that name of wire. Him put up fence of wire. It make Danby and others heap angry. Them have shooting war, maybe. Yes, that's a possible outcome if Hank Warren puts up barbed wire fencing. Ah, me hear men say that. The trouble won't start until actual work on the fence has begun. We'll keep an eye on things over there because we don't want gunplay. following afternoon, Billy, riding a pony, approached a clump of cottonwoods along the trail near his father's ranch. Jerry, who also owned a pony, was waiting there. Whoa, whoa, boy! Ah. Hi. Hi there, Jerry. Been waiting long? Uh-huh, almost an hour. You knew I'd come, though, didn't you? Uh-huh. I brought you something. You did? What? This? Golly, a make-believe gun, just like the one you have. Yep. Here, take it. Gee, and the way it's painted, it sure looks real, don't it, Billy? Yep. Golly, thanks. Where'd you get it? Tex made it like you did mine. Gosh, did you tell him about us being friends and all? Yep, but Tex won't tell. He thinks we ought to be friends. Fact is, he thinks your Uncle Hank and my father ought to be friends, too. He does? Yep. But I guess they never will be. Grown-ups are funny, aren't they, Jerry? Uh-huh. Guess I'd get a licking from Uncle Hank if he knew I met you here all the time. Guess Dad would lick me, too, if he found out. Bet he thinks I ought to hate you like he hates your Uncle Hank. Uh-huh. But it's more fun being friends, I think. Me, too. Tex says someone who hates someone else is an abomination in the eyes of mankind. Golly, Tex said that? Yep, I learned it word for word. 
What's it mean? I don't know. Neither did Tex. He heard a preacher say that once. Anyway, he sure it's something not good. Gosh, I wouldn't want to be that. Me neither. Look, now that we each have wooden guns, let's... Listen, someone's coming down the trail. Yeah, let's keep out of sight till I get close, and then we'll play hold up. That'll be fun. Here they come. Come on. Put them up. We got you covered. Oh, 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 oh. Golly, look, Billy. An outlaw and an Indian. Get them up, I said. <laughs> All right, fella. Guess you two hombres have the drop on us. <laughs> Better do as he says, Tonto. <laughs> on them heap mean-looking guns. <laughs> Gosh, Billy. Now what do we do? That outlaw... I'm not an outlaw, son. You have a mask on, haven't you? Well, I have my reasons for the mask. I'm afraid those wooden guns aren't enough to keep us here. Oh, golly, Billy. He knows they aren't real. <laughs> They're real enough for games, boys. Guess we can put our hands down now, Toto. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. uh, you boys live nearby? Yes, sir. I'm Billy Danby, and he's Jerry Warren. Jerry and I are friends. I see. Are you Tom Danby's boy? Yes, sir. And Hank Warren is my uncle. I live with him. But they don't know we're friends. They wouldn't like it. You boys are very fortunate to have each other for a friend. Is that Indian your friend, mister? That's right. Toto is my friend. My father hates Uncle Hank. Mm -hmm. Uncle Hank hates him, too. I've heard about their feelings toward each other. I feel very sorry for them both. You do? Huh? That's what Tex said, too. Oh, who's Tex? Our foreman. He says Dad and Mr. Warren are going to start a range war if they keep on. That's what. Uh-huh. And Uncle Hank says tomorrow morning he's going to start putting up a barbed wire fence. And he says he'll be ready for trouble, too. Dad told all our men they'd have to ride with him tomorrow morning to stop Jerry's uncle and his men from putting up the wire. Look like trouble come tomorrow, King Asabi. Yes, Tonto. Where is the fence to be built, Jerry? Uh, over yonder, where the trail goes along the creek, between Billy's ranch and ours. I see. We'll ride over that way, Tonto. Ah, see you again, boys. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Goodbye, mister. Bye. Golly, did you see that big white horse, Jerry? Uh-huh. Sure a beauty. I hope we meet that masked man again. I like him. So do I. And the Indian, too. Hey, we better start home. It's getting near supper time. All right. Tell you what. Let's meet here tomorrow and we'll ride over and see what happens. Wanna? All right. We'll meet right here tomorrow. <laughs> Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode over to inspect the disputed boundary line between the ranches. Look, Tonto, that's where the rail fence was taken down so Billy's father could drive his cattle through. Ah, it's not good if wire fence be put up. If those two men got together, instead of being at each other's throats, their ranches would be more prosperous. Ah, boys have more sense than... Older ones. Yes, they become good friends. Look, he must have Oh, 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 Seems like Dan and his men are preparing a big drive of cattle. They're going to cross Warren's land before the wire fence is put up. Ah, them settling herd there on Danby's side for night. Driving through in early morning, maybe. If they don't get those cattle through before the Warren ranch hands show up, there'll really be trouble. Danby will stand to lose some of his cattle. That's right. We better go back to our camp for the night. We'll ride over here early in the morning. Ah, uh, maybe it better we start. Uh, men, see us. Yes. What's out, Kimosabi? Right. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto sat on their horses watching a roundup of the Danby cattle near the boundary line of the Warren spread, their presence was suddenly discovered by the cowhands, who immediately opened fire on the masked man and the Indian. Hold your fire, Tonto. Uh, what we do? We'll leave for the present. It's the best thing to do. Hold on, Silver. Let's count. Meantime, one of Hank Warren's ranch hands reined up hurriedly before the ranch house. Oh, fella. Oh, oh. Come on in. Uh, What's up this time, Jim? Well, uh, I thought you ought to know that Danby's rounded up a big herd of his cattle. Got them all ready to run across our spread early in the morning before we get down to start working on the fence. Ah, so he's fixing to get his herd through in the morning, huh? Yeah. Well, we'll set out earlier than we expected and give Tom Danby and his cowpokes a little surprise. Say, that's a good idea. Jim, you tell the boys to be ready to ride at sunup. Yes, sir. After we keep them cattle from getting through, we'll get to work on the fence. Uh, and that'll be one fence Danby won't find so easy to pull down every time he wants to get his herds across my spread. Well, we'll all be ready to ride with you, boss. Good. Tomorrow's a good time to settle this feud between Tom Danby and me, once and for all. At dawn the following morning, Tom Danby sat on his horse giving final instructions to his men. We'll start the herd moving right away, men. That'll give us time to get him well across the corner of Warren's spread before his men come to put the fence up. Uh, Are we going to let him put up that chance anchor's wire fence, boss? As soon as we get the cattle across, then some of us will come back and see what we can do to prevent that fence from being put up. The way I look at it, there's plenty we can do. It may mean flying lead, boss. Someone's going to get hurt. Why can't you settle a peaceful life? Don't try to tell me how to run things on this spread. If you want to work for me, you'll do what I tell you, understand? Uh, if Hank Warren has his way, my spread will go to the dogs. You'll all be out of jobs then. I'll get them cattle started. And see that you keep moving in the right direction. All right, boys. You heard what the boss said. Now get to work. All right, come on. Get up, get up. Get up, get up. Meantime, Hank Warren and his men were riding toward the place where Danby intended to drive his herd. Boys, we'll settle this matter first. Later, the wagons will come along with the fence post and the wire so as we can go to work on the fence. Tom Danby ain't going to turn back them cattle without a fight, Hank. That's right. We don't have anything against Danby's men. One of us might get plugged. As long as you're working for me, boys, any fight of mine is your fight, too. So don't forget that. If Tom Danby wants to argue with lead, and we'll accommodate him. I heard talk in town last night, Hank. They were saying at the cafe you hired an outlaw to rustle some of Tom's cattle during the night. What? That's right. Tom's men swear they saw a masked owl hoot and an Indian hanging around early in the evening. They ran them off. The owl hoot was masked and riding a big white stallion. That's something they dreamed up, Jim. <laughs> I guess knowing they're in for a showdown makes them kind of nervous. Especially Danby himself. There they are. And they're heading across my spread with the whole herd. Come on, men. Get your guns handy. We'll ride in from this side and stampede them cattle back where they come from. Come on. Get up. Get up. Come on. Get up. Come on. Now, start shooting. They're milling around and heading back, men. They're starting down the trail by the creek. Some will be lost, eh? That'll be Tom Danby's bad luck. Keep shooting, men. About this time, Billy and Jerry, who had heard of the impending trouble, met at their usual place on their ponies, and then rode along the trail by the creek toward the place where the herd was to be driven through. 
wonder if there'll be real shooting, Jerry. Golly, if there is, somebody might get hurt. Uh-huh, that's right. Gosh, did you hear that, Billy? I do hear something. Whoa there, whoa. Oh, boy. Golly, they're shooting, Billy. Maybe we shouldn't have come. Uncle Hank would be mad if he knew I was here. My father would be, too. Yes, we'd better. Listen, what's that? What? Sounds like thunder or something. Oh, there ain't a cloud in the sky. Look, Jerry! The cattle herd coming at us. We'll be trampled if we don't get away from here. <laughs> the ponies are scared. Let's go back, quick. Yeah, let's. Get up, fella. Get going, boy. Hurry up, Billy. I am hurrying. Get up there. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, Billy, get up quick. Billy, your ponies are... Get up, ride with me. My, my ankle. I, I can't. We'll be killed. Don't leave me, Jerry. Don't. I won't, Billy. I'm your friend, but we'll be trampled. Help! Help! Meantime, Hank Warren, riding furiously alongside the stampeding herd, saw Tom Danby just ahead. This will teach you, Danby. This will teach you. I'll get you for this, Warren. Look, look at the path of that herd, a boy. Who, 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 It's Jerry, my nephew. On the ground, another one. He'll be trampled to death. You'll be responsible for your own. Every day the other one's my boy, Billy. There's nothing we can do, nothing. Billy, Billy! A short distance away, other eyes had seen the danger of the two little boys. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had ridden unobserved up the trail. Look, Kimosabe. Herd stampede, boys in trouble. Help, help. Got to get to them, Tonto. Hit big chance. Maybe you're not. I'll take break. the chance. Won't fool there. Without giving a thought to the great personal risk he was taking, the masked rider of the plains urged his great white stallion silver toward the onrushing herd. His one thought was to get to the boys and try to save them from a terrible fate under the hoofs of the maddened cattle. Silver, sensing the danger that lay ahead, seemed to slacken his pace for just a moment. Then at the urging cry of his master, he overcame his fears and raced forward at greater speed. Come on, big fella! One, two, there! Within a couple of minutes, the Lone Ranger covered the distance that separated him from Billy and Jerry. Jerry's pony had run off, and as the Lone Ranger reined up, the two boys stood with arms around each other and terror showing in their faces. Oh, easy, Silver. Stay, big fella. Billy's hurt. I couldn't leave him. Quick, Billy. Give me your hand. Uh, there, you ride in front. Don't leave me. Now you, Jerry. Up behind. Uh, hurry up. We'll be caught. Stay on side, boys. One, Silver. Sweeping the terror-stricken boys to the back of his great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rode hard in front of a thundering herd of fear-crazed cattle. Silver responded to the masked riders urging and soon outdistanced the onrushing steers. A few moments later, the Lone Ranger reined to a halt as the maddened animals raced by. Oh, Silver, oh, my, oh, steady. We made it, boys. You're all right now. Golly, I never went so fast. You, you saved our lives, mister. You and this fine horse. We were all lucky to get away. You can get down now, Jerry. I'll help you. Yes, sir. Oh, 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 oh. Jerry, lad, are you all right? Sure, I'm all right, Uncle Hank. My my ankles hurt. Yeah, let me lift you off, son. Hey, that's the old hoot we chased last night. Hey, what's he doing around here? Maybe we better hold him for the sheriff. Now, yeah. uh, hold on, hold on, all of you. Maybe this is the masked army that Hank sent stooping last night. But I just saw him save my boy, and that's good enough for me. I never saw that masked man before. Any snooping he did was on his own. But I'm darn glad he was snooping, or Jerry would have been trampled to death. That's right. I, I saw Billy's pony get down. Jerry could have got away, but he stopped to help Billy. What were you boys doing here, anyway? And what were you doing together? The boys are friends, Danby. And uh, Jerry Warren was willing to give his life to stay by his friend Billy. What? Well, I'll be darned. So you boys got to be friends in spite of Tom and me hating each other. Golly, Uncle Hank. Being friends is better and much more fun. Sure is. While you two were busy hating each other, the kids were meeting every day and becoming good friends. That's right. You know, Uncle Hank, 
Tex told Billy, you and Mr. Danby are abominations. He, uh, he said we're what? <laughs> You probably meant your hatred toward each other was rather shameful for a couple of grown men, Danby. Mm. We think grown-ups act funny anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, uh, I guess uh, maybe our boys got a better slant on how to get along than uh, we have. Well, what are we going to do about it? I guess them getting together was only natural, seeing as how... Boys will be boys. I suppose if we was a couple of boys again... Well, uh, it ain't uh, too late, Tom. I see my friend waiting for me over there. So I'll be going now. Adios, boys. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, Goodbye. and then thanks. See, Dad, even the masked man has a good friend. That Indian who's riding away with him now. I guess we could each use a good friend, huh, Tom? Yes, I guess we could, Hank. I'm, uh... Taking back that wire this afternoon, and the uh, men will go to work pulling down the rest of the rail fences. You really mean that? Sure do. <laughs> Let's uh, try being friends for a while, Tom. Looks like it works with our boys right well. All right, Hank. Here's my hand on it. Is uh, that all right with you, boys? It sure is. Golly, I think it's fine. <laughs> How about it, men? <laughs> you know, that stranger with a mask had a lot to do with all this. I wonder just who he is, anyway. He calls his horse Silver, and his friend's name is Tonto. So we figured out that he's the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.